What's the deal? Family, welcome back to the channel, bringing you the realest and rawest reactions from across the globe. Today, we got another banger for y'all, man. So, look. We got why all narcos feared this crazy Marine, El Marino Loco. Okay, we're about to run this one out right here, man. Shouts out to Death Door for the video. Um, I've done some cartel reactions, man. I've done them on my, this channel. I've done them on my other channel. Um, and I'm gonna start bringing them back to this channel because I'm, sw I'm switching up some things on the channels, man. So we're gonna start bringing some of these uh, the reactions I do on my other channel. We're gonna start bringing to this channel. And we're going to switch up the program just a little bit. But either way, man, let's get into this. See what they're talking about. And uh, make sure to go subscribe to Death Door, man. Go check out their videos because they do a lot of research to get these videos out. So go check them out, man. Tells fear very few things. A kidnap, kill, and torture with no regard for human life. But there is one man they fear. Eric Morales Guevara, a.k.a. El Marino Loco. In the 2010s, El Marino Loco's name went viral after his unorthodox methods of capturing sicarios came to light. What made him so feared among the cartels? And are his methods truly unorthodox in a world whose only language is extreme violence? Let's dive in. The narcotics trade doesn't just supply people with self-destructing substances. It ravages cities and puts people's lives at constant risk. I'm dropping bombs from the drones, and we have the military right here, but it doesn't seem like they, they're interested in them stopping the other guys from uh, dropping all those bombs. They're dropping drone bombs just over there? They, that just happened today. They dropped like... Me, what's me? She gotta get out of that. She gotta get up out of there, bro. She ain't, she, she, ain't, she ain't built, you know, you talking to people, you're not built for that type of activity that's going on up over there. <laughs> up over there is where you know, you, you, you not ready. You gotta, you gotta be up out of there, man. Just saying. Real talk. <laughs> like five bombs today. You're kidding. Where? Okay. Y'all seen Sicario? And Sicario, old girl, wasn't ready, bro. That's all I'm saying. It's the river. Sometimes entire cities are reduced to ashes and families are forced to find a new life for themselves if they survive the massacre. De un año para acá fui así como ustedes. El agua se convirtió en un pueblo fantasma. Las casas pues ya no son las mismas, todas están balaseadas. Antes aquí es donde estaban los jaliscos. Esto era la barricada de ellos. At the top of the cartel game are people with immense lust for power and money. They'll do anything to stay at the top. And the ones who want to climb the ranks are thrown into the same game. You can only kill your way to the top. It's a very violent game where anyone can die. Sicarios, commanders, authorities, civilians, and the families of anyone who crosses a violent kingpin. So sometimes the authorities begin to speak the Sicario's language. Enter El Marino Loco. Eric Morales Guevara grew up in northern Mexican town that was repeatedly tormented and humiliated by warring cartels. Many vulnerable teens in such towns end up working for said cartels. But Eric was brave enough to say no. In fact, he went straight to the other end of the spectrum. He swore that he would dedicate his whole life to capturing narcos, beating them and humiliating them just like they did with so many innocent people. And he didn't just target low-ranking street sicarios and enforcers. He went for the top dogs too, and anyone he could get his hands on. In his eyes, anyone involved in the drug business was a disease that needed to be exterminated to save Mexico and its traumatized people. The cartel Eric targeted with the most determination was the Gulf Cartel, which had been the most responsible for ravaging his hometown. Today, bro really went on a revenge mission, bro. Like, as I'm hearing this, the first thing I'm thinking of is the Punisher, bro. You know, you know, y'all feel me though? The Punisher went through some. He said, "I'm, I'm wreaking havoc on everybody and everything in sight that stops me from getting back, getting my get back from destroying my family and my whole life, essentially." So he sounds like the perfect candidate to go, to go wreak some havoc on some guys. Real talk. The Gulf Cartel isn't as notorious or violent as the Sinola or Jalisco New Generation cartels, but back in the day, it had a monopoly on Mexico's drug smuggling. Its beginnings go all the way back to 1984, when Juan Garcia Arbrego took over his uncle's heroin and weed industry. Abrego was crafty enough to make a deal with the Colombian Cali cartel, led by the Rodriguez-Orjuela brothers. 
he would handle white powder shipments over the Mexican border. This was a much riskier business than what he and his uncle were doing before, but the reward was much, much bigger. Abrego would get half the Cali cartel's earnings just by smuggling their drugs all the way to the US. This put the Gulf cartel at the very top of the cartel pyramid in Mexico, and to maintain their power, they became increasingly violent. But over the last decades, the Gulf cartel decreased in size and earnings dramatically, and it's partially due to El Marino Loco. As early as 2006, Eric's name came up when some Navy officials commented his methods were unorthodox. However, by then, Eric and his team had already conducted several arrests and huge seizures of weapons and narcotics from the Gulf cartel. By the 2010s, Eric was known as El Marino Loco, the Crazy Marine, El Martillo, or Mr. Thor, Mr. Mr. the little hammer he carried everywhere with him. <laughs> bro's nickname was Mr. Thor because he carried a little hammer with him everywhere he went. What the hell does bro got a hammer for? He need bazookas. He need M6, M16s. He needs AK-47s. He needs all. He needs honey badgers and all of that. The hell he <laughs> shotguns, bro. He out here with a little hammer, <laughs> destroying in the cartel. But I, I, by any means necessary, little hammer, Mr. Thor. That's wild. Well, it wasn't a hammer. It was a meat tenderizer, normally used to make schnitzels. But El Marino Loco didn't use it for schnitzels. A tenderizer was his weapon of choice if narcos resisted arrest. As word of Mr. Thor spread out, fewer and fewer sicarios put up a fight when they were arrested by his team. El Marino Loco conducted several raids, some of which made his name viral among cartel members and civilians alike. Most of his raids were conducted in the Tamaulipas and Nuevo Leon regions. In 2015, El Marino Loco was dispatched to arrest Julian Loaza Salina, AKA Comandante Toro. Comandante Toro was a regional Gulf cartel boss in Tamaulipas, and his arrest would be a breakthrough for the Mexican authorities. But just before El Marino Loco could arrest him, he was abruptly transferred to the town of Tampico. The transfer was suspicious, definitely wasn't in the interest of the authorities, but you know how Mexican cartels are also famous for bribing the police and high-ranking politicians, ensuring they stay untouchable? It can be argued that that's what happened that day. However, El Marino Loco didn't care about orders from above that much, so he led a brutal campaign against Comandante Toro anyway. He blo blocked most of- This makes sense, bro. Because you need somebody who takes an unorthodox approach to trying to capture people who just wreak havoc on, you know, on everybody. Because at the end of the day, bro, they got ties to everything. They got people that's working with the- uh, with the military, who they got inside guys there, they got inside guys in, in as far as like politicians, inside guys in the government, they got inside guys in the police, the regular law enforcement, they got inside guys everywhere. So if you do things by the book and everybody knows about what's going on, it's so easy for them to get that information to like prevent whatever's gonna happen to them or you know, sting operations, you know, pull ups, things like that. But if you have somebody who does it unorthodox, doesn't really put in all the paperwork that's needed, doesn't tell everybody what's going on and gets their little team of, of mercenaries to come take care of whatever, yeah, it's a lot more high risk for them, but it's also a better chance of success if they do the things the right way. of his operations, arrested several of his sicarios, and seized whatever illegal substances he could seize. Needless to say, Comandante Toro was angry. In the cartel world, when you're angry with someone, you don't stop until they're dead or until you're dead. Comandante Toro became increasingly reckless, engaging in violent shootouts with the Mexican army. In the early morning of April 22, 2017, Comandante Toro was killed in a gunfight with the Mexican army in Tamaulipas. However, before dying, Comandante Toro put a bounty of 2 million pesos on El Marino Loco's head. Meanwhile, El Marino Loco was operating from Tampico and his raids got ever more aggressive. One of his most famous raids was the arrest of Silvestre Jaro Rodriguez, AKA El Chive. At the time, El Chive was the leader of the Gulf Cartel in Tampico. El Marino Loco broke into El Chive's home, arrested him, beat him up, took his father's ashes, and destroyed photos of his dad from his home. On this Whoa. photo of El Chive's father, El Marino Loco wrote a note, proudly announcing that he stole his ashes. This nigga from the cartel too? 
he from the El Marino Loco Cartel. What the hell are we talking about? What the hell are, are we talking about? What's that quote? What's that quote, right? It's like, you do enough to become the hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain or something like that. It's a quote, though. It's an interesting quote, though. It's like you do whatever it is to become the hero, but, you know, live long enough to see yourself become the villain, right? <laughs> he went from, like, trying to, like, you know, avenge everything to almost becoming, you know, similar, you know, starting to have those same type of ways of the cartel, right, in his own way. And if, if, if you, you know, take that all the way to the farthest extreme... Then he becomes no different, right? He be, he just ends up becoming no different than the cartel themselves, and I'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen with him, but just interesting thought right there. This was the utmost humiliation for a cartel kingpin, and here's the thing: drug lords don't expect anyone to cross them like this. They believe everyone fears them, so no one would dare to humiliate them in this way. El Chive was simply shocked that anyone would do such a thing and even leave a note incriminating themselves. News of El Chive's arrest made headlines fast, along with the photos of the many weapons El Marino Loco had confiscated from his home. But El Chive was still alive. Angered and humiliated, he ordered a hit on El Marino Loco, promising three million pesos to anyone who brought him his head. Ooh, bro got five mils on him. Three mil from one guy, two from another guy. Bro, that's five milli on his dome. Bro is, bro is John Wick. Because <laughs> what the hell? Ain't no way, bro. It's really John Wick out here in Mexico. Another time, El Marino Loco raided one of the houses belonging to El Mamido, another Gulf Cartel member. When he captured El Mamido, he had put him on sexy women's lingerie after punching him in the face and swe- Oh my god, dog. Bro got him looking like a cross- he got him cross-dressing. He got a cartel member in a cartel- a leader of the cartel. In a dress, bro. Oh my gosh, bro. If he's still alive, this is crazy. This is crazy if he's still alive. Like, come on, bro. At this point, he's gonna have 15 mil on his head, and all the dudes that he's working with gonna be looking at him like, I, I need 15 mil, low key. Like, I do need 15 mil, bro. It's gonna be the dudes on his team that's gonna get him, bro. That number become too high. Oh, well, his gosh. eye. Then he had El Mamido kiss his Sicarios. All the while, he laughed at them and took photos of them. Of course, there are several problems with this. Men dressing up as women is not an issue and should not be viewed as emasculating or humiliating. Nor should men kissing other men be viewed this way. Sadly though, the world of Mexican cartels has a pretty toxic view of masculinity. Okay, I don't know. The narrator tripping, bro. The narrator is tripping. That shit is out. That shit is out. <laughs> I don't know what the narrator talking about. That's out, bro. What are we saying? What? In their eyes, men should be brutal beasts, violent, emotionless, and extremely rigid when it comes to their gender and orientation. So when El Marino Loco treated El Mimido this way, he was only speaking their language. He made the Sicarios do what he knew they would hate the most. Then, of course, there's the issue of photographing people while you're laughing at them and making them do horrible things. Over the last two decades, this has become a standard tortured method for cartels. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel in particular has become famous for filming the brutal torture of their rivals, posting these horrible videos online. It's their way of spreading their message. Everyone should fear the CJNG. No one messes with them, and this is what happens if they do. It's safe to say the Gulf Cartel employs similar methods. So when El Marino Loco did this to its men, he was once again speaking their nasty language. He announced his operations through social networks, but he also hunted with extreme violence hitmen and ringleaders whom he exhibited in battered men and dressed in women's underwear. In addition to dressing them in lingerie, Morales Guevara liked to make fun of his prisoners in photos and videos, which earned him the hatred of dozens of drug traffickers who even offered large sums for his head. To this day there are 5 million pesos reward on El Marino Loco's head. 
On El Mamito's property, El Marino Loco also found a shocking amount of arsenal and military weaponry hidden in buried barrels. This was prized Gulf Cartel property. For El Marino Loco, this was the best reward he could get. The Gulf Cartel was responsible for the most damage his hometown had suffered. Destroying their cartel boss one at a time was his biggest dream. But El Marino Loco's dream would soon crumble. By the late 2010s, El Marino Loco was a viral figure on the internet, a crazy Marine who stopped at nothing to capture the Gulf Cartel members and humiliate them on camera. There were stories of drug lords putting on lingerie and makeup and making out with their hitmen for the Marines' pleasure. For the Sicarios, this was worse punishment than prison. Prison happens to a lot of Sicarios. It's a risk they assume when they join the illicit work. But this kind of humiliation is only okay in their eyes when administered to their enemies. It wasn't long until the Gulf Cartel decided to retaliate. They publicly accused El Marino Loco of corruption, stealing their weapons, stealing El Chive's father's precious ashes, and accepting bribes. They didn't do so with a shy con- How you- <laughs> Hey, no, that's crazy. How does one dude, one dude and whatever his little his team is, right? How does this guy cause one of the most savage, like, just gangster, just, just dangerous groups of people to be on some, like, nah, man, he doing this, man, he, they snitching on, on El Marino, how you got the, how do you have the cartel snitching on you because you doing too much damage to him? Think about that, bro, that's crazy, that's crazy. You doing so much damage to they just to they principles, their 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 organization, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, that they over here snitching on you. Like, nah, man, y'all, this dude is corrupt. He's stealing our guns that we use to kill everybody and shoot people with and steal shit and destroy neighborhoods. Oh, he's he stole our guns. He stole a he stole the cartel leader's ashes. The cartel leader who done killed everybody. He stole his ash, his father's ashes. He takes bribes, even though we bribe politicians and we bribe cops and we bribe this. He's accepting bribes, even though we are a complete that we are a cartel organization. He is corrupt. Think about that. That's crazy to me, dog. Comment. Ain't they put no up way. banners containing all this information all around Tampulas. And well, this didn't sit well with the Mexican Navy, especially with the top ranking officers who were getting paid by the cartel. Unfortunately, there are several high ranking officials who are in cahoots with the cartels for monetary reasons. Right. This means that the cartels are protected by the authorities themselves. After news of El Marino Loco's crazy methods was made public by the Gulf Cartel, the Mexican Navy decided to let him go, or at least send him elsewhere, where he couldn't hurt the Gulf Cartel anymore. But just as this was happening, both El Chive and his brother, Marco Antonio Rodriguez, were arrested. It's safe to say El Marino Loco had a big part to play in this. El Marino Loco was involved in a myriad of arrests and seizures of cash, weapons, and drugs. During his time with the Mexican army, he reduced the Gulf Cartel to small potatoes in the northern Mexican region. That's no small feat for just one man, and considering he's just five foot seven, his aggression and violence towards Sicarios are even more shocking. Today, the five million peso bounty on his head still stands, but it's likely no one knows where El Marino Loco is. Mexican officials did not say what El Marino Loco is up to these days, but they did hint at it. Reportedly, he's in southwestern Mexico, targeting other cartel members, but employing just the same methods, dressing them in sexy lingerie and humiliating them on camera for the delight of people who have had enough of brutal Sicarios terrorizing their towns. Other rumors suggest that El Marino Loco has since retired or has even been fired from the Navy for corruption. Then there are perhaps the most exciting rumors. Some witnesses stated that Eric Morales formed his own anti-drug group, operating in hiding. Well, not the military, but El Marino Loco in particular. Cross-dressing Sicarios is El Marino Loco's passion. He might never fully retire as long as there are cartel members to catch. That's wild. That is a crazy situation. Um, who knows where he's at now? Who knows, bro? Um, it'd be it'd be tough to say he's working for the Navy still because they would be able to easily identify his work that he does. You know what I mean? 
whether he's somewhere else. You know, I feel like if anything, he's probably just somewhere else, completely gone. Maybe stops back into Mexico here and there, but he's probably gone lives somewhere else out outside the country. That's my guess. Either way though, that is a crazy ass fool right there. <laughs> Shouts out to El Marino Loco, man. Shouts out to Death Door for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed that, man. Y'all know what to do with that like button. Subscribe for more videos. Send me more videos in the comments. And that's it. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Remember to keep it real. Real is rare. Real always reaches everyone. Next time. Peace.